1887, J. J. Thomson's discovery of the electron was a significant step that led to a much deeper understanding of the microscopic properties of nature. In this entry, I will discuss the famous Millikan oil drop experiment, which was done in 1909. Now, the significance of Thomson's work was recognized in 1906, when he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, in recognition of the great merits of his theoretical and experimental investigations on the conduction of electricity by gases. But recall that in his characterization of the properties of the electron, he could only determine the charge to mass ratio given by minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11th coulombs per kilogram. Was this the ratio of two big values or two small values? Robert Millikan separated this to show the ratio was that between two small numbers and not two big numbers. And in this way, he was able to extract the elementary charge and the electron mass. Comparing the electron mass to that of the lightest element, hydrogen, it is found that the mass of the electron is 1800 times smaller. Indeed, at that time, it was the smallest particle known. Millikan devised an ingenious experiment to separate the two. Let's have a look. Millikan's famous oil drop experiment allowed the charge on an electron to be measured independently from its mass. The basic idea is to charge oil drops with electrons and then apply an electric field to stop them from falling. From the balance of gravity and applied electric field, the charge on the electron was determined. Here is seen a representation of Millikan's apparatus. The oil is atomized by spraying it into the upper chamber. Gravity causes the mist of tiny oil drops to fall and pass through a hole into the lower part of the chamber. X-rays are applied to the chamber, thereby ionizing the air. The free electrons so produced adhere to the surface of the oil drops in differing numbers. A magnified view of the oil drop shows them falling under the action of gravity. By positively charging the upper portion of the lower chamber and negatively charging the lower portion, the oil drop can be made to move up or down. An electric field strength can be chosen to just stop the drop. Using the same formula as gave the charge to mass ratio in the cathode ray tube experiment, Millikan was able to deduce the charge on the oil drops. In this case, the acceleration is due to gravity on the oil drop of mass M. The field E is adjusted to stop the oil drop as seen through the microscope. The oil drop is charged with n electrons of unknown charge. Some oil drops have many electrons and others have only a few. Differently charged oil drops require different field strengths to bring them to rest. By choosing many different oil drops, recording their diameter to calculate their mass, and applying different stopping electric fields, Millikan could plot the charges on oil drops as a function of the electric field required to stop them. By extrapolating the values, he arrived at the smallest charge requiring the smallest stopping field. From this, a charge of a single electron was obtained. Now let's see how the charge on the electron was determined. We have here one oil drop suspended in the chamber by the application of just the right amount of electric field to stop the drop falling under the action of gravity. The applied electric field is different for every drop because both the drop sizes vary and the charge on each drop varies. But in every case, in order to suspend the oil drop, the electrostatic force and the force due to gravity must be balanced. This gives the basic formula in terms of known quantities. That is, we know the value of the stopping potential E. We know the acceleration due to gravity. So, if we know the mass of the oil, then the charge on the oil drop can be measured. So what is the mass? The mass is easily obtained because the density of oil is known. 
Density is the ratio of the mass to volume. Recall, oil floats on water, so it has a density less than water. The density of water is one gram per mill, or a liter of water has the mass of one kilogram, and the density of oil is about 0 0.8 grams per mill. Millikan knew the density of his oil, and he could calculate the mass by measuring the oil drop's radius through his calibrated microscope. Then, using the formula for the volume of a sphere and the known value of the radius, the mass of each oil drop can be determined. But the mass of the oil is not the same as the mass in the formula, because the oil is floating in air. So there is an upward force due to the buoyancy of air, which is due to the mass of air displaced by the oil drop. Hence, the downward force due to the mass of oil is balanced not only by the electrostatic potential, but also by the buoyancy of air. This gives us the final formula where everything is known in the experiment except the charge on the oil. Each drop varies in size and varies in the number of electrons that are attached to the oil drop. By using different intensities of x-rays, a greater number or a lesser number of electrons attach to the drops. And in each case, Millikan measured the charge of the oil drops. The experiment was performed many times, and each time a different number of electrons attached to the drop. It is from this data he found that the oil drop charge was always an integral number times a small charge. That is, he extrapolated his data down to the case of one electron attached to an oil drop. In this way, the charge to mass ratio was resolved. Here is Millikan's first published value, which is within 1% of today's accurately known value. With this charge, it is possible to extract the mass of the electron. In fact, the magnitude of the charge on the electron is called the fundamental charge. It is the smallest charge found to date on stable particles, that is, particles that have a relatively long lifetime. The electron has a charge of minus E. The proton has a charge of plus E. An alpha particle has a charge of 2 plus E, etc. The charge E is a fundamental constant. It has this value, which cannot be broken down into more fundamental parts. In my next entry, I will talk about Rutherford's experiment, which was done at McGill University in Montreal.